in this video and the next video, I'll be going through the same procedure that I went through in the previous couple videos, but we will be looking at benzene now. So benzene is a six-membered hydrocarbon ring. It's aromatic, which uh, if you remember from your organic chemistry class means it has these alternating double bonds like this and this actually has a resonance structure and so it's a resonance structure that looks like this right here so those double bonds are sort of shared all the way around the ring and so that's why you often see it looking like this where it's a sort of simplified version. It has this circle inside to tell you that the, those pi bonds are shared sort of all the way around the ring. Uh, and so th these are a few other ways you could see it. So you can see it with these sigma uh, sp2 hybridized orbitals like this. Uh, but we will be focusing on these six pz orbitals that look like this, which then can form this delocalized system, as I said, where those bonds are shared sort of all the way around the ring. And so it'll look something like this, where the tops sort of have this same phase or the same sign, and then the bottom have the same sign. And so we get kind of these these pi rings are sort of above and below the plane of the ring. And so uh, the Benzene is a D6H point group, which gives us this uh, rather large looking table here. In the reducible representation, if we went through all the uh, matrices for each of these and took the character of them, uh, would give us uh, this right here. So we have this gamma sub pi here for our reducible representation, which ultimately gives us this right here, this addition of all the the uh, irreducible representations there. And so we will actually use the C6 subgroup, which has this right here. And so we actually sort of transform this into this one down here. So instead of the A2U and B2G, E1G and E2U, it's just the A plus B plus E1 plus E2. And so something that we can notice, and we would notice this if we looked at even more examples, is that in a cyclic CHN, where it's uh, the same number of C's and H's in it, that the uh, rotational symmetry CN, there will be N pi molecular orbitals, uh, one belonging to each irreducible representation. So in the above table, so this one with the subgroup up here, the E representations we split into these two like this, uh, which gives us a total of six up here. So six irreducible representations. Uh, we have one for each of the PZ orbitals in the CHI. We actually had the same thing in our previous example with the C3H3, which if you remember had the three PZ uh, atomic orbitals which uh, formed into that uh, that that pi bond and so for benzene with n equals six we should have six pi molecular orbitals each belonging to a single 1d representation where we have split these e1 and e2 up into these uh, two 1d uh, irreducible representations. And so our symmetry adapted group orbital will have a form that looks like this where these coefficients in front of it are the characters from the irreducible representations from the table above. And so the operations of our C6 subgroup, so on the phi atomic orbital here, if we just do each of these uh, on that phi, sort of like we did a couple of videos ago when we were looking at the cyclopropanyl cation. And so we just get the phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4, phi 5, and phi 6 here. And so substituting in the characters from the 
uh, irreducible representations, which uh, are, you know, like for the A is the 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, and the B is the 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and so on. Uh, we get these right here. And so I box these ones because these are actually our symmetry adapted group orbitals for the PA and PB projection operators here. But for these, uh, the E1, which I've labeled E1A and E1B uh, for, uh, for, I guess, this row up here and then this row down here, and then the uh, E2A and E2B here for those, we see that we actually have these complex characters on here. And so we will use the, uh, the second method that I showed two videos ago. Uh, so because of the imaginary coefficients, uh, we will do, like I said, for, for the C3, H3+, plus, use the linear combinations of our E1 representation. So the E1A and E1B, which gives us the 2 phi, uh, then the epsilon plus epsilon star, epsilon, epsilon, or epsilon star plus epsilon, the epsilon plus epsilon star, the epsilon star plus epsilon here. And so we have the epsilon is equal to this e to the i2 pi over 6, which uh, using the Euler identity is the cosine of 2 pi over 6 plus i of 2 pi over 6, uh, where the epsilon star is just the minus of that. And so we have the minus right there. So when we add those together, we get the 2 cosine of 2 pi over 6, which is 2 times a half, which gives us a 1. And so our our third uh, symmetry adapted group orbital is this right here. So we have this N3 here, which is our uh, our normalization factor. So we do the same thing, the same procedure for the second linear combination of our E1, which uh, had the the subtraction and the I in the denominator here. And so that will ultimately give us the 2 sine of 2 pi over 6. Uh, so we end up getting this the square root of 3. But since we're normalizing, we can just sort of drop that square root of 3. But we get this for our fourth symmetry adapted group orbital. Then we do the same thing for our E2 representation using uh, this linear combination and this linear combination. That will get us these symmetry adapted group orbitals here. And so after normalizing, uh, we end up with these six symmetry adapted group orbitals right here. And so we have the, the sort of uh, totally symmetric one here. We have this with the alternating positives and negatives. Then these two right here, which come from our E1. Then these two right here, which come from our E2 representation. Uh, and so these are orthogonal such that uh, if we did the integral of this inner product here, we would get the Kronecker delta. So uh, when we do that with any that are different, we would get zero. But if we did it with the same one twice, it would give us a one. Uh, but anyway, these, as I said, are the symmetry adapted group orbitals we will be using. In the next video, I will once again find the relative energies for each of these things uh, and we will get our symmetry adapted linear combinations. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.